So again, this is the chapter six and question number seven. So the question is basically giving you a simple three by two matrix, meaning the first player has three strategies and the second player has two, X, Y, uh, K, L, M, and the payoffs are nine, two, one, zero, one, zero, six, one, three, two, four, two. Um, and the question, as far as I remember, was asking, is the strategy M dominated, strictly dominated? And if so, what is the strategy or belief that strictly dominates M? And or if M is not dominated, well, is there any belief where M is a best response? All right. So by the way, so for example, one conceptual thing that you should, you should remember is if a strategy is dominated, all right, then uh, there is no belief where that strategy is a best response to it. Okay? For example, this is a statement that I want you guys to be clear this week. All right? So that doesn't require to solve anything, but it is very, very important. So what does that mean? Well, first of all, what does a strategy uh, uh, dominated means? A strategy so intuitively and then formally. I'm not going to write the formal definition, uh, but intuitively a dominated strategy means, guys, uh, there is another strategy of this player, all right, where that strategy always gives a higher, strictly higher payoff, all right? So always means, uh, I keep underlying this, but always means uh, whatever the opponents, there might be more than one opponent in this game. So if, for example, there are three players and I'm talking about player one, his opponents are player two and three, right? So regardless of what the other guys, what the opponents do, all right, well, then uh, the playing that strategy uh, should be worse than uh, the, the other strategy if, if my strategy is dominated, all right? So Again, conceptually and intuitively, a dominated strategy means inferior strategy. There is something better, all right? But obviously, when you sort of do it in practice, uh, you have to be careful about it, all right? You, you, you under I know you understand this intuition, but when it comes to applying it, for example, is there any strategy here? Let's look at pure strategies, all right? Meaning for player one, there are two pure strategies other than M, K and L, right? So if M is dominated, it should be either K or L. But don't forget, sometimes a pure strategy does not dominate a, a pure strategy. So we, we also look at, we also need to look at mixed strategy. But here, let's first focus on the pures. So here K, it, does this dominate M? I mean, is it really always better? No, it's not always better. For example, K is better than M when the second guy is playing X, right? Because nine is higher than three. But when the second guy plays Y, so one is worse than four. So therefore, I look at column Y. So every column, uh, one strategy should be giving strictly higher payoff than the other payoff. All right, then the other strategy, I'm sorry. So here we don't have this. So K does not dominate M. Similarly, L does not dominate M because it's sometimes better, yes, but sometimes worse or sometimes equal maybe, all right? So if, if sometimes they're equal, for example, if this was three rather than one, we, could, we still couldn't say L is strictly dominating M, right? It's not strict domination. It's what we call weak domination but we're not really into the concept of weak domination. So that means for player one, uh, there is no pure strategy that's dominating M. Hmm. Well, but is there any mixed strategy that dominates M? Um, I did not solve this question before this lecture, but my, int well, sort of when I look at the payoffs, my guess is that yes, there is. Uh, and I'll talk about it in a minute, but let me come back to here Remember I said, if a strategy is dominated, well then there's gonna be no belief where that strategy is a best response. So by the way, you know, best response is a part of this strict domination idea, uh, but nevertheless, it's very, very important concept in this core, all right? Uh, maybe 
if, if the Nash equilibrium is the most important, second best, I'm sorry, the best response concept is the second most important concept, all right? Um, all right, so what is best response? Best response is the following. Look, this is a game uh, environment, right? a strategic environment, right? My payoff depends on my opponent's uh, strategies. So, or my beliefs about my opponent's strategies, all right? So, given my opponent's uh, strategy or given my belief about my opponent's strategy, what is the best action I can pick, all right? So, best action I can pick. Well, that action, or um, what is the best strategy I can pick? Well, that best strategy, well, we call it as a, uh, a best response strategy, all right? That's conceptually what it means. So, for example, again, a very simple example, I know, but let's suppose I believe my opponent is going to play X for sure, all right? So, I don't have any mixed beliefs. So if my opponent is going to play X, what is my best response? Meaning, what is the strategy that gives me the highest payoff? Well, is it K and get 9? Is it L and 1? And is it M and 3 payoff? Well, obviously it's K. So K is the best response to X. All right. What about if my opponent is playing Y? Well, if my opponent is playing Y, my best response is L because 6 is the highest payoff I can achieve. All right, so what I do observe in this game is that, um, well, K and L, they both are best response to some belief about my opponent's strategy. Pure beliefs, but some beliefs. Well, here, M is never a best response to any pure strategy. That doesn't mean that M is, 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 is a strictly dominated strategy, because again, I did not look at uh, mixed beliefs. What if my opponent plays X and Y say half and half probability, well, then maybe M is going to be a best response. I don't know this yet because I didn't check. But you know what? If a strategy is not a best response to, you know, any pure strategy, well, trust me, it's a good candidate. Candidate though, right? It's, it's not a sure thing. It's a good candidate that this strategy is in fact strictly dominated. All right. So this is sort of my hunch. Uh, 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 and, and this is the reasoning behind, uh, so it's not really hunch, it's sort of educated guess. So M probably is a, a strictly dominated strategy. So all I have to do is to find a, a mixed strategy uh, between K and L, because K alone itself cannot dominate M. L alone cannot dominate M, but maybe a mix of K and L, right? Because here, 9 and 1, when I mix them, uh, it may end up something higher than 3, although by itself L cannot be higher than 3. And again, by mixing K and L, I mean mixing 1 and 6 payoff, I can get something higher than 4. So that correct mixing is very important. But if I can mix K and L, well, then that may actually dominate M. So what is that mixture? And this is exactly what the question is asking. So let's call this P and this is 1 minus P. Uh, why I put P1 minus P? Well, I am mixing between these two strategies, all right? So there's no point of saying this is P1, this is P2, because I know P1 plus P2 must be equal to 1, because once again, I am mixing between these two strategies only. So the probability must add up to 1, always. So for that reason, I call this P and this 1 minus P. So uh, what am I going to do? Well, for M to be, for M to be dominated, remember, dominated, strictly dominated means the same thing in this course. So for M to be dominated, I have to have the following. First, my strategy from this mixture, so let's call this sigma 1, where I play K with P probability and uh, L with 1 minus P probability, okay? That's my mixed strategy. So the expected payoff of sigma 1, all right, given that my opponent is playing X, uh, I'm sorry, I say X, but I write K. You see what I mean? I, sometimes I do make such silly mistakes. Um, so what is my expected payoff? Uh, so I am playing this sigma 1 mixed, and my opponent is playing X, um, so what is going to be my expected payoff? Well, it's 9 times P plus 1 times uh, 1 minus P. So if you sum them up uh, or simplify it, it basically means 1 plus 8P. 
all right? And then what else? My expected payoff, if I play this mixed strategy, but my opponent is playing Y, what is that equal to? Well, that equals to one times P uh, plus six times one minus P. So if I add, add it up or simplify it, I'm gonna get six minus five P, all right? So if you remember a strict domination means there exists some sigma one. Uh, so sigma one dominates uh, S uh, one, so the first player strategy, if and only if. So the expected payoff of sigma one, uh, 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 let's call this S two greater than, strictly greater than expected payoff of S one, S two for all S two. Remember, so that was the formal definition. What does that mean? For every pure strategy, so go back and look at the definition. For every pure strategy my opponent follows, uh, the sigma one guy, the, my expected payoff of playing the sigma one guy is gonna be higher than my expected payoff of playing S1, all right? So that was the idea, and this is why I calculated those expected payoffs, given that my opponent plays X and Y, because he has two pure strategies. So the strict domination, I mean this guy, will imply the following. So if for M to be strictly dominated, I have to have the following, one plus eight P, uh, the combination of these two must be greater than three when I play M, all right? And one, oh, I'm sorry, six minus five P must be greater than four. So the question is, is there any P value in between zero one, obviously, that satisfy both of those inequalities? Well, there's only one way to check out, check this out, just find the value of P. So if, if you send one to the other side and divide both sides by P, that means P is greater than uh, two over eight, which is one over four. And the, the second guy means, I'm gonna send five P to the other side to make it positive. So it's gonna be two over five. So P is less than two over five. So that is point 0.25, right? And that's point 0.20. Um, no, yeah, no, it is point 0.4, right? Okay, so, uh, what does that mean? That means I should be looking at P's greater than 0.25, but less than 0.4. So there are many such P values. So for example, pick P equals, for example, EG, uh, P is equal to 0.3, which is in this range. So if you calculate the expected payoffs, you'll see that it's higher than three and higher than four. All right, so that's it. So for any P value in between this range, or in this range, uh, this mixed strategy sigma one strictly dominates the pure strategy M. Um, okay, any question?